All right, here we go. To my wife, I feel obligated to tell you another woman has stolen my heart. By this, I mean she literally pulled it out of my body and ate it. Freaky stuff. I really had no say in the matter. Technically now, I am deceased, which legally nullifies our marriage. They say, till death do us part, and goddamn, am I dead. Uh, just disgustingly so. I was not a good husband to you. In fact, I faked my death many times so as to trick you into leaving me alone. Though this may be hard to believe, I can assure you this time nothing about my death has been fake. Know that even though I, your faithful husband, have died, I will always be your boo. Ha ha, get it. Good luck with the oranges or whatever, Chip. That'll go over well. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Just Raw with Ed. My name's Grizzly. I'm the only dungeon master. This is Riptide. Hey, everybody. My name is Bisley. And I play Chip. Hey, what's up? It's me, Condi. Um, I, I commiserate with everybody who had to watch that just now from Bisley. And I, I do offer my deepest con condolences uh, for the loss of whatever it is he just took from you. Um, I played Jay Farron. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Charlie Slimesicle, and I play Gilliam Tides! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got the whole fucking thing, dude. Look at this. It's crazy. This thing, it's so oh tight, God. too. I'm fucking... I'm I'm snatched. I'm snatched like a, like a fucking medieval, medieval porridge maker. Oh my god. Yeah, no, it's like the whole thing, man. It's so fucking cool. That's crazy. Where did you get that? How did you get that? That is fire, dude. Big, massive credits to, um, uh, you can find him on Twitter, uh, Poodwattle. 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 He made this whole thing and messaged me about it, and turns out he actually lived nearby, and so I just went on and he put it on me, and I haven't been able to get it off for weeks. Poodwattle. We don't do the intro anymore, but we did it one more time <laughs> just for you. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate dude. That's like the craziest part is it just like fits you. Yeah, yeah. yeah it fits you like perfectly. <laughs> I mean like, can I can I breathe in all the way? <laughs> Not really. But that's that's okay. I feel more in it than ever. I don't know how my characters live this long, actually. Having now been, been in the armor, I have no fucking idea how he survived. <laughs> how the fuck is he moving like that? How does he swim with that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, armor, armor's tight today. <laughs> Charlie and Gillian progressively throughout the episode are just going to get more and more wet and red. It is cool as hell. Do like a little, little spin, yeah, like a really slow one. Like yeah. Spin. Really slow. Really shit. slow, really like slow, really see. slow. But there's like detail in everything. Oh, yeah, wait, it has like the little moon thing. Do you see it? Audio listeners taking another fat fucking L today. Yeah, huge fucking L for audio listeners. Audio listeners, I don't know, do what you always do. Fucking imagine it. <laughs> <laughs> Previously in the Black Sea, the three of you, captains of the Riptide Pirates, split from part of your crew. The rest of them, Griffin and Queen, as they followed Star and Zamia to uh, aid them in clearing out what they could of the Daphne Palace to arrange a wedding later for both Star and Zamia. Then you followed Igneous through a blighted mushroom forest, seeing the hollowed remains of a Mykonid, and entered an abandoned town, Portobello Town, um, where Chip drank with a hollowed bartender. And Gillian and Jay discuss the weight of the crushing expectations they both share near a broken prophetic hero statue. You arrived at the foot of this unnaturally uh, erected dry ice mountain where Gillian summoned Lucy 
uh, his new seed to help help him climb as Jay uh, flew and Chip struggled, Chip and Igneous struggled to get out there. But once you got to a break, uh, like a fourth of the way up the mountain, you walked across this uh, frozen lake almost, the surface of snow and ice as it crumbled and these uh, Yeti pirates erupted and began to attack and fire and quiz you, specifically Chip, on Captain Rose. And it went great, and I answered all the questions right immediately. <laughs> Miraculously, Chip answered uh, or, or provided the correct answers, and the encounter subsided, and you met this crew that used to know Captain Rose, and they begin to lead you into some secret opening in the side of this icy mountain. And so, the journey continues. You guys, on this um, little sailboat get sort of led through this uh, cliffside lake to uh, the the next base of the mountain where you watched Floski, uh, the uh, muscular female, sort of jump off. Uh, you actually watch them, I guess, walk on top of the surface of the water, almost as it's still frozen. And they... Uh, she grabs or puts her hands on the, the 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 surface of this icy mountain and seems to reveal this like secret entryway, pushes it and, and then rolls it to the right where the sailboat continues to sail in with you and then she shuts it behind you and then you're surrounded by this like darkness uh, as your eyes sort of adjust from being out, uh, not in the daylight, but just out in general and then into this interior that is completely unlit. You feel the boat gently caress forward and then... All right, who's touching my hand? Not me. I know someone's doing it. Lu Wait, where's Lucy? No, please say it's not Lucy. <laughs> please say it's not Lucy. Please say it's not Lucy. Literally anybody, please. Oh, it's wet. Oh, it's so wet. Oh, it's so wet. Please turn on the lights. <laughs> By the dimly glowing red eyes next to it, I think it might be Lucy. Uh, as you say that, and you feel the boat uh, sort of slowly come to a stop uh, in this interior, these little glows begin to sort of sparkle into existence as you see these different colored like snowflake shaped uh, crystals gently floating around this interior uh, an interior that is sort of uh, dome shaped like uh, like being inside of a cavern every single shadow in this place seems to sparkle in the same way that the crystals do and all the Yeti pirates sort of get off their own sailboats, what was left of them. And the big one, Jarski, looks back and just gestures for you guys to follow in as you kind of arrive in this cave of uh, icy wonder. It's very hard to describe. I don't I don't know why. I mean, we were just at Disneyland, but I just pictured it's a small world. I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a small world from Disney. I fucking hate that ride. I jump into the water, I close my gills, and I drown. As you continue to follow in with him, it's almost more akin to not a small world but like you ever seen those basements that are just full of cool shit like a pool table and decoration like a gamer lounge almost but not for it's like a man cave yeah yeah but like more gender neutral because it's not just for men it's like a cave of it's a they cave <laughs> <laughs> yes you arrive in the icy they cave dope they cave do you see you like kind of hung up on the walls and from the ceilings there's like different pirate ship wheels or helms that are just uh like like decoration almost like trophies even um like they have some sort of history of being a pirate and 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 raiding different ships and then taking their helm as a trophy essentially the same idea as like going up to a car and stealing like the little fucking emblem off of it i didn't know that was a thing are you a criminal Gandhi? Maybe Dude, no not the show. no well i would never do that Gandhi's not uh and you see that they're sort of uh, bickering not bickering familial bickering uh in front of you as they sort of lead you in a little deeper what do you think is up there just kind of an open question into the echoing lave. Probably something equally as shiny. Maybe like a ping pong table. This is incredible, by the way. I'm, I'm sorry about your boat back there. Jarski turns around for a moment. Ah, no worries. We'll build another one. Welcome in, by the way. It's so good to have new visitors. Our friend of a Captain Rose. I figure, yeah. Well, hey, so what's up with the 50 foot portrait of Captain Rose? <sighs> That, well, it, he changed our life. A man the Black Rose Pirates saved us even, if you will. 
Ah, that's the biggest one that I could make. <laughs> I guess that explains the golden statue of Captain Rose in the corner. Made of golden, and underneath it's chocolate if you can get through the golden exterior. What? <laughs> and w what are those uh, in the display case? Are those, is that underwear? That is underwear, <laughs> but actually that belongs to Mike. Mike has to change it. I've already uh, a few hours. So, the, so you just keep it in the display case, or was that like a special repair? Yeah, I'm proud of him, Mike says. Hey, good for you, Mike. Look, this one's got like a little stain. Don't know why. Guys, we got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, hang on, Mike. I can get behind that. I think I think I need to start doing this on our ship. Yeah, you should. We have room, right? In the in the, in the the quarters? Yeah, you're onto something, Mike. Yeah, we totally have room. I, I mean, yeah. I've been wearing this pair for a long time, so like... I agree. I think Mike is on something. Yeah, let's just like uh, circle back around to that later on, maybe. I'm doing it. Um... I mean, what is, what is your connection? I mean, you said he saved you. Um, You've gotten to the point now where this is there, like almost like a lounge area. Uh, Rebo, the uh, thinner monkish one, uh, sits down on like this like plush, almost uh, kind of like a mushroom, like a beanbag mushroom chair. Solid color. He just sits on, pulls out some sort of like uh, rolled paper. It l looks like tobacco of some sorts, but it's probably something. Uh, you don't know about. Next to it, though, is another one of these mushroom beanbag chairs that has painted uh, Captain Rose's face on it, uh, <laughs> which is available for anyone else. Um, uh, Rebo speaks up. There was a time when we weren't so chill like this. When we would... Um, I probably didn't sound like <laughs> this last game, but I, I'm changing it up. It's a different kind of high, huh? You know, yes. Oh, the accent weed. <laughs> Chip, don't fucking... Would you like to try it? Yes, it does actually change your <laughs> no. life. Sure, sure, sure. I'll try it. No, no, no. no. Oh. Chip, put that down. A decade ago, even, we're here not friends with the island. Raiding them, pillaging, uh, being sort of a nuisance, if you will. All of a sudden, the, um, these pirates show up, and then and, 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 and pirates are... There's a pride thing, if you will. We fought them, and... Well, they knocked some sense into us, to put it lightly. Can I have that back? Are you finished? It, oh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. You know what, actually? Hang on. Maybe I can... Fancy a puff, Gillian. Oh, don't mind if I do. Get silly gilly. <sighs> Not bad, what you got here. <laughs> oh my god, you were passing it around. Oh god. Okay, so you're in this sort of accent changing blunt rotation with the Yeti pirates. Uh, Jay, would you like to, uh... Yeah, sure. Just don't ask me to speak yet. Fuck it. <laughs> Inhale it. It literally goes in my mouth. I swallow it. True Superman did. Oh, don't worry, I have another one. Uh, pulls out, I think it starts, starts, starts uh, fixing it up, rolling up. Jorsky says, He's leaving that out of the details. I mean, we were sort of under this Ice Queen. Uh, it's a very draconic beast of you. If you have heard of it, probably not, though. Not with how, long, how young this lot looks. And, um, we did our bidding. Mostly. Captain Rose and the crew freed us. This, uh, this, uh, mountain is our frozen remains. And when she was frozen, we were free to be our own leaders. Oh, well, that's just how you see it. <laughs> uh, Jolly good. <laughs> okay, I already struggled with a woman voice. Oh, looks like it's worn off. Oh, that was fast. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually proper metal. <laughs> really metal, though. Is that the reason that the corruption doesn't affect you? You all seem sound of mind. Oh, that, that's our ancestors to thank for. I and mean, we have this, uh, the blood of an ice elemental. Uh, not just in the ice. But the coldest, driest ice known to any any world or, or, or plane. And because of that, I guess it just makes you sort of uh, close to immune. Okay, ice is the weakness. Gotcha. Actually are genetically chill like that. <laughs> Fuck. What are you genetically? I mean, what are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> Gillian just like flashes back to the tree, starts having an existential crisis. I don't know. Well, I think genetically, Gillian is like the chosen one, like born of the gods and everything like that. And Jay has this like fire in her blood that makes her super powerful. And I'm like a guy. <laughs> um, you know. You're, yeah, and you look like shit. Yeah, I'm dead. I'm not even a guy, just like. Yeah, genetically dead. But like the dudest dude, for sure. 
And we're we're only here because of of Chip. He's the one that was on the crew with the the Black Rose Pirates. That's true. Yeah, it was just a little, little shorter back then. I mean, actually, we have like a few of the Black Rose. We've met with Rufus in Allport, um, and Dre and Finn are on our ship. Really? He starts to circle you around ship. No, I, I think I remember you if you were a part of the of the group. Yeah, it was just like tiny and weird and I found sticking firecrackers in things. I had a firecracker phase. Maybe you remember the firecrackers? No ringing a bell. But you're not the first pirates to come up this side of the mountain, although you're the first friend. So, um, please, if there is any way we can help. I mean, you look, uh, you said you're dead. So, uh, per yep. perhaps you Super. could use some, uh, the... If, how long have you been in the Black Sea? I've been uh, exposed to this sort of element that is uh, corrupting. I'm going to say it's been like two or three days now. About three days. Long enough to die. Long enough to die. Died here. <laughs> One third of us Were died. Were these other so. pirates, uh, like, spidery? Like one of them spidery? No, and most of them pretty forgettable, really. I mean, they're all frozen at the bottom of the lake outside, so. That? All wow. right. Huh. Well, we can offer some assistance with all that corruption. Do um, you have any, like, refreshments? Uh, as soon as he says that and you ask that, you see the uh, Flosky lean over and whisper into his ear. Huh? Okay. We have, um... I'll be... I'll just be blunt. No, thank you. <laughs> He's not good with peer pressure, sorry. <laughs> Aside from the corruption, can I smell like shit? And, and what we can... Do for it as friends of Captain Rose is give you a little cleanse, if you, uh, which will help with the corruption and the smell. Like a shower? But a special one. I'm in. Yeah, I mean, I haven't showered in ages. I mean, I don't think that's coming off of Jay. She's just like that. But I could, you know, that'd be good for me. I punched Chip in the back of the head. What is it? <laughs> you don't even feel it. <laughs> Zero damage. My sister in arms here, Flosky, would like to give you a, a, your hair a makeover. Sort of fit uh, our own vibe. It's kind of her thing, and she doesn't have many people to practice on. All of us are just like. And she looks like stoic. <laughs> She's right next to him, arms crossed. And you see, uh, she actually has like, for for her stature and her face, beautiful hair. Uh, no, no, sidebar, sidebar. One second. Okay. Yeah. What's so up? So there's there's an old idiom that I heard. Right? Is like so. Imagine you walk into nice a room and say. there's two barbers. One has really nice hair and one has really bad hair. Usually, you go with the one that has. The, the really bad... Wait, fuck, how did that go again? No. Nice... Wait, wait no. Wait, why would you go... Wait, because... Could they cut their own hair? Well, it's different if you're cutting someone else's hair. No, because, like, do they cut their own hair? I mean, does does she cut her own hair? Or is it, is I, it one of you... Okay, okay, never mind. This is irrelevant now. Yeah. Why are you guys making this so complicated, Mike says? I don't know. I mean, I'm in. I just... There was a sidebar. Who am I to deny a, a pirate sidebar? Well, it's just... It was just time for a sidebar. Hey, Mike, what's your last name? <laughs> what's my last name, Jarski? <laughs> I don't know. Give him, give yourself one. We don't really have last names. Mike Annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I think Annoyed is a really good last name. Mike Annoyed. Yeah, that's that's yeah, really good. I think, I think that great. really fits the personality. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can cut her. You can cut her hair. You can cut her hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can cut her hair. Yep. Showers make you wetter. So yeah, I mean, I mean, long hair is kind of inconvenient most of the time in battlefield or otherwise. I'm kind of the kind of guy who would cut his own hair, and I'm pretty good at it, I would say. So just like be careful, you know, with like how you. Is that why your bangs are straight? They're not straight. They're like curved. How they're supposed to be. Ignis elbows you a bit. Chip uh, leans into your ear. I just want to mention the uh, thing that you're looking for, the reason why we're all... Well, well, right, but I figured I figured they'll cut the hair and we can get a bath and then, like, and we bring it up. Well, I don't bring it up. Like, just get everything on the table now. Okay, okay. Um, All right, we'll, we were... Uh, I, you know, I appreciate the haircut, but we actually came up here because we were looking to find something that was left for me. Friend of the Black Rose Pirates... There was a construct that had a rose and a note. Yeah, I see the note. Yeah, I'll, I'll pass it over. See big guy Jarski. That's his full name. Uh, <laughs> is looking at the note for a second. Looks up and eyes you. Great. You lot go get cleaned up. And uh, I'll return shortly. Okay. Turns around uh, and you kind of wa watch him start to walk away. And then he walks right into a wall and then... Pfft, was disappears. I would like to insight check first roll in a month. Right in the middle, 10, 12. <laughs> what is Jay trying to insight? I don't know, there's just like something ominous about 
the way he said that was it more of like an intrigue like was he just intrigued with with this letter or did he know about this and was expecting this to come up one day that's the kind of thing i'm looking for i think the emotions that you read on his face are he tried to keep it like reserved and subtle but it's quite giddy mm, excited kind of hops away he does bit. like a little little heel click as he goes through the wall yeah yeah only you see that <laughs> with my 20 fucking seven passive perception a Flosky opens up another section just sort of pushes another one of these almost like they're controlling the ice in here to uh shape it into another like shape it from being closed off to be in this door into this hallway in way and you kind of get led into this like very gym bathroom shower situation where there's these small squares and these nozzles and then mike goes okay i'm gonna be the i'm gonna produce it so i'll go over here on this hose and i'm just gonna f blow into it and then what do you mean you're gonna produce <laughs> Wait, what kind of shower is this mike <laughs> you just stand <laughs> under the hoses and when you come out you'll be feeling right as rain all right hopefully is anybody allergic to what to what to water mike to what magic where's the water coming from mike me <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, do you take Lucy in with you? Yes, I want to give her. A, I want to give her a side part. I want to give Lucy a haircut. Shower, big brother. <laughs> yes, that's right, little sister. Here, stand right here under Mike's special hose. <laughs> uh, we'll get a little drizzle going. All right, Mike. All hydrated up for this. You think you can handle all four of us? I assume uh, you guys separate into your own little individual sections. And all right. Here we go. Wait, guys, who put Lucy in mine? <laughs> oh. I just need uh, Chip and Lucy to make concepts. <gasps> Lucy! Dude, if this is how she dies, <laughs> oh, I'll be so upset. Go to seven. Lucy got a three. Down this hall, almost like reverberated, you hear a, <gasps> like a really deep inhale and then from down the hall as, a, as the steam almost not not necessarily water but vapor and steam the steam starts to come out of the nozzles above you in this in this chamber it quickly uh, with the pressure begins to feel your your spaces your little corners gillian and jay it's it's not again it's not a temperature that is by any means normal to explain where it, it feels like it should be one thing and then it, it's just completely different. It's like this so cold it's hot or so hot it's cold sort yes, of thing. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's like so cold it's hot, but for you two it feels refreshing. Like all of your pores or everything that is like seeped into your pores for however long it's been since the two of you have uh, uh, bathed or, or, or just gotten the salt out of your hair or whatever, it is seeping into it and then uh, uh, pushing it out uh, just by this like spa and relaxing feeling for the two of you. This is wonderful. I exfoliate. As soon as it touches your skin, Chip, it fucking burns. Like bad. It feels so painful as soon as it hits you. Uh, I'm going to ask if you want to stay in here or if you want to run out because of the pain. Next to you, you hear Lucy go, ah! like just <laughs> screech and just start like kicking all around. Oh, yeah, you said it, Lucy. God damn, there's years of gunk coming out of these puppies. And you watch Lucy begin to like fucking melt in this like black <laughs> ooze of the puppy. <laughs> What? Do I see that? Do I see that? Uh, if Lucy's with Chip, then I'm gonna say no. <laughs> Lucy fucking melts? That's insane! Oh my god. I mean, what's the worst it could do? Kill me? I'm gonna stay? You can die if you fail uh, dead saving throws. Why? Am I taking damage from this? If you want me to be clear about it, yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be damage. It's gonna hurt. It's not doing the cleaning thing. I didn't say that. If it just hurts, but I'm still getting the good effects, I would like to stay. He's getting gunked out. I feel like I'm getting a lot of the gunk out. There's a lot of stuff on the floor. A little gooblet comes out of everyone's <laughs> pores. Hee hoo! He's down the drain. <laughs> what? That's so terrifying. <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> Mike and Ed, you gotta see this. You take uh, 43 points of radiant damage. Because it's doubled. Uh, as you feel this thing like uh, almost burned and singed your skin. Basically trying to exercise you. It's really it's really hard. It, there's no other way to explain it. Everybody here, however, um, as you resist, unfortunately, Lucy does not. So where does Lu Wait, so... But Lucy's melted. Lucy goes down the drain. <laughs> no! Oh my god, I don't even know. Okay. Oh, Lucy, this is quite the refresh, isn't it? It feels great for you guys. That, that was wonderful. Wow. Mike runs out of breath. The uh, steam shower stop and slowly begins to dissipate. Uh, there are like little, uh, let's just say, like cloth towels uh, hung up everywhere. Uh, you know, because you're you're kind of moist now. It's like walking into a steam room and coming out. And you're just kind of soaked. I stay far away from those things. Obviously, Gillian doesn't either. 
How's Chip feeling after that? I walk. You guys, you guys are just like having a good time. Like, oh, that felt so good. You walk out. You, you're just, you're just hanging out. You look over. Chip walks out. He's just like stiff as a board. And you just, you ever seen Terminator after he gets dipped in the lava? Like bones. <laughs> Wait, your bones? You, you lost skin. Like there's like a little <laughs> bit of flesh left, but it would like walk out. <laughs> um, Mike. <laughs> Chip, what the fuck? Well, I guess they just had to burn the corruption away. Where's your skin? Oh, uh, live us with a lot of corruption, man. We could sure. <laughs> 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 just seen all this because he had to leave the bandana out. Maybe it's a good thing. I could take up uh, music. Check this out. I grab a little stick and I start to play my <laughs> ribs. How are you? Boom, 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 Still boom. St this is all starting to sink in. This is this is a lot. This is a lot. Yeah, no. It's well, maybe it just let me <laughs> here. Uh, can I can I try and oh fuck? Can I even use lay on hands on him, or will he just explode? Boop. And I'm going to use one point of lay on hands on him and judge if he heals or explodes. Oh no! This feature has no effect on undead and constructs. No! Fuck! You gonna put some some skin back? Yeah. <laughs> Do that. You see, like, th a little bit of the skin that's left just, like, flake down to the ground. At least it looks cleaner now. Mike sort of bounces when he walks and he comes through the steam and his sea ship goes, ah! And then it's like, sort of runs away. <laughs> Why? What did you see? I asked if anyone was allergic! You should put the bandana back on. And maybe make a note of, in case any future doctor's appointments, they ask for allergies. Everybody, Gillian, it doesn't matter for Gillian, but reduce your corruption points by three and remove all of your exhaustion. Oh, great, that's awesome. I don't actually know what the bathing routine is for pirates, but you guys are fucking clean. I mean, sparkly. I mean, I mean, like you have the smoothest, most glistening skin. Except for Chip, he doesn't have skin anymore. I'm just imagining like a <laughs> montage of you guys modeling. Like you get up and you're walking around, you're looking good. And it just every now and again flashes over to me standing <laughs> stiff as a board. Like half of my skin is gone. Well, Chip, at least your skin looks great. Just wish it was still, you know, on you. Nice and exfoliated. Uh, it's, uh, it's all right. It's all right. I put on the bandana and I... I look normal again. That was a divine shower. Mm. I want to do it again. Oh, where's Lucy, by the way? Did she like it? She was in there at first. I thought she just left her left before me. The flash, it enters your mind of Lucy fucking melting <laughs> into the tree. Bah! Bah! <laughs> That's weird. I, it wouldn't be very much like my little sister to turn down a holy <laughs> shower, would it? <laughs> Sorry, I was a little distracted by all my skin coming off. I don't know. No, it's okay. I think she went down the drain. <laughs> I go over and I take one last look. She went to the big farm in the sewage system, little guy. Don't worry. I don't even know if I can summon her again. I don't know what something went so wrong, but so right. Well, we all loved you, Lucy. Oh, totally. Uh -huh. I felt that way. I miss her soft, wet tongue. I'll miss her jumping leg. I'll miss the way she spoke in some sort of demented human <laughs> voice to me, calling me her big brother. I'll miss the way her fur didn't feel quite like fur. Charlie, do you just want to roll a d20 for me real quick? 15. I eventually, as you, you get kind of uh, 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 called back into that lounge uh, area, the chillax place in the Thave, uh, and you get sat down pretty, I want to say harshly, Kind of like she doesn't know her own strength. You get sat in these chairs, uh, and first, who wants to go first on getting this sort of like Viking hairstyle by Flo's King? I don't really have like hair like that anymore. If my skin is gone, did you did you just fucking weasel your way out of a haircut by saying all my hair falls out and then I illusion well, it back on? You're insane. She could, she could show me like what it should look like. I didn't do that to you canonically. You could have like missing skin but still have hair. Are you like a full Minecraft kinda, skeleton? Now? Yeah. Okay. I was I was ready to ride as a skeleton. <laughs> I don't think you're a full fucking skeleton. Bro, straight up accepted it and became a mob. It's up to you, your character, if you want to be a full skeleton. Uh, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go first if you guys want to. Uh, yeah, I'll go second. I mean, I've got a lot, so maybe a good test run, right? As you sit down, uh, you hear Flosky very quietly say, Have you ever considered being born? I, 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 I start struggling. I start struggling. I start getting out. I start. Jerry, you can go first. 
Gilly, and you look over at Chip, and he's just like rubbing his hands <laughs> together, like getting ready. This is not a fave. <laughs> this is a house of demons. <laughs> uh, oh, I rolled, I rolled physical, but I guess that's I got a fourteen. Yeah, you're stuck in it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can't ruin me. <laughs> she begins to go to work. Start trying to flex my hair so it can't be cut. <laughs> During this uh, burst of chaos. Jarsky comes back and he's holding a treasure chest only he can carry, really. Um, it's much, it's like, it's like two hands under it. It's fucking huge. She's sort of like walking over and he sets that shit down on the ground. Uh, as Gillian's struggling and in front of uh, Chip and Jay, as you guys are sort of hanging out with these uh, Yeti pirates. My jaw falls to the side and then drops to the ground. You've been dead for like six hours. What the actual fuck, man? <laughs> points out at Chip. <laughs> That's probably what you've been looking for. Is it money? I don't know. That's the thing. When he left the island for the last time, left it with us. Protect this. Don't ever try to open it. Don't let anyone else open it until they come. And you see that there is like a, a, a six letter locking mechanism at the front of it where like a normal lock and key would be. We had to solve a puzzle. Six letter. <laughs> okay. Uh, he actually looks taken aback for a second, Jarski. Wait. You don't know the code? Oh, well, I mean, Gillian don't know. We're just guessing. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Starts to pace back and forth. I'm sure it's somewhere in, the, in, the, in that head, right? Well, wait, I could probably, like, figure it out. What, why would no, 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 no. I now have a confession that I wasn't going to say, but now I have to because you don't know the code. We got a little impatient. It's been 10 years. Okay, 10 years or so before since, since Captain Rose left. We tried to get into it. And now... If you get it wrong again, it might explode. That's just my theory. So wait, he said don't open it, but you've just been trying to open it. What happened to like the last attempts when you got it wrong to like make you think that it would explode on this last attempt? Uh, well, Mike yells out, points at an underwear that looks charred by like like fire or lightning or something. Well, that's what happened when I tried to get in it the first time. Points at another underwear. And then that's the second. You have a lot of those. Uh, I, we can figure out a code. I mean, is there like any hint? Did, maybe did a hint come with it? Like a little Dre piece of paper? Knows? Finn could know. Finn knows a lot of things. That's true. I guess we could ask people, but same time, where's the fun in that? The fun is not exploding. <laughs> and the rose was left for you, right? It's that, that, that automaton seemed to recognize you. Yeah. Maybe there's something locked deep inside that mind palace that can unlock this real chest i brain blast i go into my mind palace while he's brain blasting can i inspect the treasure chest slowly for like any lettering or anything around it what kind of letters are on the mechanism that kind of thing you know and can i roll like a history of some kind uh jay roll investigation first uh, that's a 12 uh the six letters that are there right now are uh, and they sort of like turn dials and if we get into that, this will take a really long time. So I'm just going to go with that. What's there right now? Uh, you see, A G, Y C, E, X. Why did you input a guy sex? <laughs> Password is gay sex. <laughs> Chip, run it. Run you it. Know what, I guess guidance. I, I guess guidance this one on him. Is my destiny. It's your destiny to have gay sex, and I cast guidance on him as he unlocks the I've chest. I've been running from this <laughs> one. Wait, I wasn't done. It wasn't done. It wasn't done. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I write gay sex and it explodes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's over, and the campaign's over. <laughs> if you unscramble it, just to switch the G and the A from the order I give you to, but gay sex, sex spelled with a C <laughs> on the thing, and you confidently put that in. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. No, what? No. <laughs> Jay, with your investigation, think about the X as a missing letter. So like A, G, Y, C, E are correct letters, but like X is is in Wordle. If we were like doing this Wordle style, this would be a gray letter. And then Chip, you can roll history. That's an eight total. Roll investigation instead, like to help Jay. 17. You reckon the note left behind is probably tied to this word. What the fuck did the note say? Oh, oh, I think I know what it is. Captain Rose. When I had that conversation, with Niklaus, I said, why would Captain Rose, what would he desire? What was the answer to that? Oh, I don't know. I was, I was, I was there. there. It was legacy. <gasps> oh my God. Yeah, there it is. Yep. Mm. That's right. You're right. And in the note, it said the legacy of the Black Rose will be eternal. The answer is legacy. 
You sure you don't want to try gay sex? I think we should try gay sex. I want to lock in gay sex for $5 million. Gay sex is number one on the board. I like your theory, Bisley, but it's stupid. Gay sex. <laughs> uh, the fucking shit is <laughs> bam, bam. Listen, Bisley, the problem with your theory is it doesn't come together. But you know what does? Gay sex always comes. Go ahead and lock in gay sex. <laughs> Legacy. You walk over and you start to... Uh, Move the letters on the on the dials and then uh, basically rearrange them into the the correct order. Like click the two sides together to lock it in. Like see, there's like uh, a small moment of click and then gears mechanisms inside the uh, the chest and then almost like a f small shock wave of this like red glittery arcane light that that shoots from the seams of the chest uh, as it sort of pops open and you're able to open it. Chip and Jay and even uh, like Jarski and Mike and Reba. Well, I really was chilling because he's chill. So they all kind of like huddle over as you start to open it up, and this kind of like red uh, glow turns golden as you lift it up. Then and then and then you know very Zelda like. And then we cut to commercial. The new KFC <laughs> big fucker chicken sandwich. <laughs> have you ever thought your chicken didn't have enough fucking lard on it? So it didn't have enough. Re Introducing the gay sex bird. <laughs> the legacy chicken twisty McFuck face. Put it in your fucking mouth. Mm. Two slabs of fucking meat shaped like men between delicious cheese sheets. Whopper, Whopper, <laughs> Whopper Junior, double, triple. <laughs> Come on down to Man Burger. When you open this up, I wrote this down, and I, before we started, I said I might regret this, but I wrote it down as an opportunity for you guys, just like a fun little quirky, hey, this is kind of like the last chance or the last time that you'll ever have to think about your characters from the prequel. So what I wrote down was, when you open this up, what is one thing, you can say it out loud or DM me. I recall Finn's old notes, there's one creature that he studied the most. <laughs> no, no, no. What do you guys think? And it can be anything that'll fit in this chest. Dre Farron, back when they were your brainchild and not mine, Dre Farron, Finn Tynchider, and Arlen James left in this little chest a decade ago before they left this island. So something- Legacy, so you can even, yeah, you can even treat it like okay. a time capsule. A gem worth a million billion gold. This is so cool, I just worry that I'm gonna come up with something like that's t too much. Don't worry about it, this is just the last chance for collaborative storytelling with those three characters pretty much. So Chip opens up the chest and he sees, you see an assortment of items and they're all kind of like piled on top of uh, kind of an array of just like gold and, and, and gold coins and gems. It's just like normal pirate treasure stuff. But then like uh, what's mixed in it, you see uh, uh, some letters uh, or some envelopes, some different items. Uh, and then one thing catches your eye immediately as soon as you clock it. So what do you pull out? I see one thing that catches my eye the most, that being a bright shimmering turquoise stone embedded into a silver ring worth one billion dollars a huge stone worth one <laughs> billion dollars and i've i've kind of got it in front of me but it's orange if any for any for all our video watchers this is like kind of what it looks like audio listeners it's just a really big stone with almost like silver fingers coming up and grabbing it and i will take that and i will put it on inside it uh, the turquoise stone you can actually see almost like these like swirling waves in it uh and when you put it on you get the sense that you're attuned to many things at the moment yeah uh, the magic items you have and this is going to take you know like a short rest or so to actually attune to to figure out what it does um so you don't know at the moment but it feels very magical it feels powerful uh and it reminds you of arlen the color, the the waves, uh, and for some reason putting it on makes you feel a little safer. Another thing that you catch before Jay rushes over and kind of pushes you out of the way. <laughs> Damn, I'm just mean. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you also see um, an envelope with like a black rose stamp and a conch shell, although it's a bit smaller, right next to it uh, that you pull out. And then Jay kind of rushes up. And I tackle you aside. I shoulder check you. You go <laughs> flying into a wall. Out of the way. This is a really cool car. <laughs> Jay, <laughs> uh, this excites you. You can tell Dre left something behind too. What is it? What catches your attention? What do you pull out? I would probably look in and I'd, I'd quickly actually notice um, a pistol. It's like a silver and gold with, with swirling engravings that kind of go from each end of the barrel towards the center uh, where a giant circle is that's sort of it looks like a setting uh, a setting sun basically like over a wavy ocean he has attached to that as well he has like a rubber band going around that and a bunch of notes 
Um, and looking underneath the pistol, there is a entire, just well-written, formal letter addressed to Dre from uh, from his brother, Jason. And looking over it, it just looks like he is being disowned uh, <laughs> from the family. A very aggressive letter in a way, maybe a little passive, some disappointment. A lot of caps. Is Jay like reading, is Jay like just like rip that off the pistol and start reading it? Yeah, it wouldn't rip it off. She would like unfold it. She would like take it out from the bindings and then read it and then on the back side she'd flip it over yeah as soon as you look in the chest you recognize the the pistol and you get the very brief flashbacks of being a kid and hearing about your uncle and his really sick cool uh, rebellious escapades as a pirate of the black rose pirates when you're like super young you recollect about how he wasn't just known for being a sharpshooter he was being he was known for being a, 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 a dual wielding sharpshooter. So that's one out of two guns found. Where's the other one? <laughs> Who fucking knows? The sure shot gun has lost um, the fucking void. <laughs> and she flips it over, and in the bottom right is a little picture of of a really young Dre Farron and, and Jason. He's got he's got Jason in a fucking chokehold. He's giving him a noogie. Um and above that, <laughs> uh, Jason is so much larger. It's dude. Really, <laughs> no, as kids, Dre was the larger one. <laughs> it's the funny oh, part. Okay, okay. Yeah, he just had Jason had a growth spurt. As kids, as kids. And up above it, on the back, scrawled in uh, unfamiliar handwriting, it would say, "The path you choose to walk is your own. Though others may take it with you, no other can walk it for you." Um, and then it has the initial CR. I go drop kick shift because apparently that's what I'm doing today. No, 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 no. Once you get done, shift body checks you out of the way. Well, Gillian looks through it. We're just like cartoonishly in a, a smoke cloud. Yeah, we're in a smoke cloud, like punching each other. You sort of be like palmed by Floski as you're ripped out of this cloud, Jay, and put into the hairdresser chair. And Gillian, you feel it done. Essentially, when you notice with Gillian is that uh, she's giving you these very Norse. Uh, braids and locks with bands around the uh, braids, I guess. Um, and uh, you can describe it later if you wish. You don't really have to. It's up to the imagination. Uh, she didn't shave you bald, but... Yeah, no, I, I think I just look at it in sort of a highly reflective glassy ice wall. Um, and I just go... Norse. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> he doesn't miss, folks. Never misses. Oh, it's just too easy. And I go into the chest and I find a book on gay sex. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> How do you attack me out of the way? I pick up the padlock and I rewire it to say gay sex and I throw it at you as it explodes. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. You go up to the chest <laughs> and you do, in fact, see a book by <laughs> Finn Touch. I was trying to think about what it would be. And the first thing that came to my mind was Dark Puckered Hole. Okay, it's a book called Dark Puckered Hole by my grandfather. I do immediately put it on the ground and use a level four smite. Um, I destroy it forever. I, I obliterate it um, as it explodes in a blinding flash of light uh, and is never again seen. Wait, wait, wait. No, hey, can, no, can no, this what? Air, no. Can this go out publicly? Like, can people get yeah. Is this okay? Apparently, there's been worse out publicly, I say, as I look at the cover where there's a. <laughs> rather, rather crazy photo of my grandfather doing things you I never could have imagined. Dark puckered hole is the funniest thing you've ever said in your whole fucking life, man. This is it. Before you smite the book, do you mind rolling Arcana? Fine, I roll Arcana on dark puckered hole. Because when you grab it, you feel this oh, book man. is insanely magical. Okay, I got a 16. You feel this book is insanely magical. It has some properties that are given to you if you finish reading it. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on the ground and I destroy it forever. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. <laughs> are you, are you sure? After you said that? Yeah. You don't want to read the climax of this story? It's going to fucking incre increase your diameter, bro. I, I, I put it on the ground. I actually destroy it. I actually destroy it out of pure principle uh, and it explodes. And I, I look, um, I look in the chest. Maybe he left something else too. Um, and there's nothing. No, I find a, uh, like a, a green and blue and white, uh, with like a barcode on one side. Library card, uh, with, uh, it just kind of, it says library card. It has some information about Finn on it. And there's a little square with his face <laughs> smiling. Um, and I pick it up, um, and I go, Ooh, and then there's a flash of light as I like pick it up 
Uh, and all of the, like, there's like a push, and the information on it changes to like my name and like birth date and stuff. And the uh, the photo is just like me, like mid blink going <laughs> ooh for, like, for, for forever. Um, but I find, yeah, I find this library card. Wonder what sort of places this gets you into. You also roll a d20 for me as well. Four. And then flash of a very quick smite. The smoke clears when you finish looking at no, the no, card, and no. the book has not been. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. There's no escape. This is your destiny. It's quite magical. <laughs> I look up at where I think the moon is, and I go, "Why?" And I pick up the book and put it somewhere. I put it in a dark hole. All right, just gotta pull you away from the episode real quick to talk about our sponsor for this episode, HelloFresh. Now, I gotta tell you, I've used HelloFresh for a while now, and with my schedule, it can be so easy for me to forget about dinner. But HelloFresh makes it so easy, giving me over 40 recipes every week to choose from. With so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef-crafted recipes. Produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness that you can taste. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. It is incredibly easy. I'm not a good cook, and these meals come out awesome every time. Even though the fall can feel jam-packed, HelloFresh makes whipping up a home-cooked dinner actually doable with quick and easy options, including their 15-minute meals. That's less time than it takes to get delivery. And with everything pre-portioned and delivered right to your door every week, it's really a no-brainer. Turn to the HelloFresh market for amazing add-ons and enjoy the season's limited time fall flavors lineup. Feast on desserts like the apple cider cake with caramel sauce, or please a crowd with appetizers like the barbecue pulled pork nachos. And don't forget the mini pumpkin cheesecake, perfect for a little me time treat. We all know HelloFresh takes the hassle out of mealtime, but did you know it can also save you money? HelloFresh is cheaper than the grocery store and 25% less expensive than takeout. That means less stress in your day and more money back in your pocket, baby. Like I said, I've used this for a while. I love all of the meals that come. It saves me so much time. And I love the stuff from the marketplace. I always get these banana chocolate chip muffins and they're amazing. They make me crazy. I love them so much. All the food that comes just tastes so good. And it's way easier than you would think to get food that feels restaurant quality even better. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50JRWI and use code 50JRWI for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50JRWI and use the code 50JRWI and you're going to get 50% off, which is crazy good. So go on over and get that sweet deal for America's number one meal kit. And thank you so much, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this episode. You also noticed that sort of uh, hidden underneath the gold coins, there was a little like velvet, almost like a dice bag of sorts uh, that was kind of hidden underneath some coins when you pull out that card. Hang on, sorry. Just to, just to, sorry to circle back around. What was the book called again? Dark Puckered Hole? Was Maybe that it's not actually about gay sex. Think about Bro, it. Bro, what if it's about the hole in the sea? It's the most <laughs> important lore that we'll ever get. <laughs> we, never, we never open it. It's hard to tell if the picture on the front cover is a whirlpool that leads down oh, to the dark depths. Oh, fuck off, dude. There's no fucking shot that the cover is just an asshole. And the wording starts off really, really vague. Like, it doesn't actually say anything specific. Who knows how deep the hole goes? And once one comes into it. I like to think also that, like, the words are, like, text wrapped like around the hole <laughs> yeah 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 so what did you say there was like a dice bag as well yeah it's like a velvet almost like a dice bag uh and you pick it up and there's you can hear like ding, like some ringing inside of it okay i'll take a little peek it's weird because when you hold it it feels like there's something in there when you shake it around there's definitely clinging when you peek into it there's nothing inside the bag um don't really like the texture of velvet does anyone want this it's a bag that sounds like it has things in it, but if you look in it, there's no things. That's strange. Here, does it feel like there's things in it? Throw it at Chip. I catch it instead of him. <laughs> I fucking tackle her out of the way. <laughs> That's my bag! No, I wanted that! Ah! Hey, contested dexterity checks. 15. 22. Well, who do you think you are? Pressure point! You freeze for the next five minutes. <laughs> I grab the bag. It feels like there's something in it. I look in it. There's nothing in it. <laughs> I don't see anything in it. I know, but it feels like there's something in it. Here, Jay, you check it out. You feel something in it? I hold it in front of her. Jay! All oh, right, pressure point. Let's pass it back to Gillian. I look inside. 
There's nothing in this. Yeah, I'll just, I'll, t I'll tuck it away. I'll put mysterious bag with things, but not things in it. With nothing but everything in it. All right, who's up next for the uh, for the haircut? You did a wonderful job, by the way. Thank you so much. I think I'm already, I, I just imagine I'm frozen. I think I was already strapped in, but. Oh yeah, you're pressure pointed, so you can't even resist. Yeah, it's over. You tuck that mysterious bag away, and the sort of excitement dies down as you all of you have sorted through uh, what was left in this box by Captain rose and you do see there is a ton of gold and stuff in there um but uh it's sort of distracted by the items that you're holding and wondering what they do most curiously what is inside the envelope that chip found and what the shell the cone shell is used for or connected to while you're pondering that jay's hair dressing gets finished as is i guess there's only two of you that can really get the makeover igneous is made of rock and i don't know how that works and uh chip is dead so <laughs> so yeah if you want to describe what uh she looks like i mean it's called the elling braid it's, it's sort of a, a braid that goes down from the midsection of the top of her head down to just the lower part of the neck into a sort of bun that has another braid coming out of it from from the left that reaches down to behind the shoulder. Oh, sick. That's fucking awesome. I actually used one of my super reactions on it. <laughs> that's how you know. That's how you know it's good. I'm really glad. You guys look, uh, I, unironically, fucking slay right now. You look so good. Fuck yeah. Jarski shuts the treasure chest and goes, Well, uh, I think that's everything. That they left behind. What about all the money and gold in there? I'll accept it as payment for protecting this for so long. Yeah, I guess that works. Yeah, that actually tracks. Yeah. And hey, we did get these awesome haircuts and a pretty cool shower. I think that's payment enough. Yeah, yeah. Well, we could take some of it, right? We are actually. He, he, he's smiling and then he's merely like, like straight face. Little, little, like little known fact that we don't often talk about, but we are in horrendous amounts of debt. Oh, I thought if I forgot about that, <laughs> it would go away. That's not how that works. We haven't seen the loan sharks yet well then maybe they're not there and we can keep spending and winning big you don't need to worry about it we're totally okay and responsible with money you can have it all how was it going to give it to you one coin as like memorabilia so when will you be leaving <laughs> okay yeah i mean i guess we can just like leave now it seems like we've overstayed our welcome a little bit i look over at igneous i just like make eye contact like what's oh, up like you know we're if he if he takes notice of me, I'll, I'll look over at the chest and look back at him. And say, "What's up?" Yeah, uh, he hits he hits the blunt rotation. What are you staring at me for, my friend? <laughs> oh no! Did you hit the accent weed? Just now, my dude. Yes, are you ready to get going? I think we've got what you're looking for. Look at the envelope. It does not fit <laughs> Igneous like, at all. Holy shit, it like changed your personality too, man. What the hell? This isn't right. Oh god, it just wore, it wore off. It wore off fast. You have to hit it multiple times. Thank God, too. <laughs> Thank God it does. Re 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 says, I, ha I, I have some if you want to take it with you. I would love to keep that in my back pocket for a later bit. hundred percent. I think we should all, I think we should all actually have one of these. Yeah. Yeah. I'm about to hotbox the ship and make everybody British. That's too far. Okay, you get a little baggie of uh, accent changing, accent switching Kush. Incredible item. <laughs> We're coming for you, Nikolaus. <laughs> <laughs> you know he sold that shit. <laughs> I'm just looking at Igneous. Like, I'm trying to convey that, like, maybe what if we take that shit? Like, what's up? What do you think? Igneous looks at you like he doesn't want to really want to fight with these guys, and they look like they'll fight over the gold. I don't really want to fight over the gold. These guys are, like, chill. They're chill. They helped us. They melted your skin off. And Jarski says... Well, you know, it's still the Black Sea, so I guess you could stay if you want, but we're not really going anywhere. How long have you guys been up here? It's pretty hard to keep track of time. But those are like years, right? So, like a lot of years. Quite a while. But now that we don't have to protect this chest anymore, we can, um... But like, where are you go? Where would you even go, you know? Probably to the sky. What are you going to do with gold in the sky, Zarsky, is all I'm trying to say. Where are, wouldn't you be at that point a little above that? Whenever you're crossing from um, the ground level to the, the cloud level, there's usually some sort of toll. They got, they got tolls everywhere nowadays. How would you know that? Before we were stuck here doing this favor for Captain Rose, we were on this quest. Well, I, I guess it was the Ice Queen's quest, but I'm still very interested. And what's supposed to be great cloud storm mountain giants made of the elements 
living in these giant cities in the clouds. But you don't need all that, right? Because you're going to be around giants and stuff. Giants don't need gold. They need, like, giant money. All I'm saying is you guys have been up here a while. Things have changed down there, really, and up there, I'm sure. How much gold do you have? A ton, like, all the time. So you don't really need this, do you? <laughs> well, it's, it's on my other boat is the thing. I have it. It's my other boat. I got two boats, and it's when I transfer from one boat to the other boat, one is my, my gold boat, and my other is the normal boat and it takes a lot of effort and time to get from my gold boat to the normal boat so i try to keep a little bit of gold on Chip, the normal boat we just looted the entire like castle the entire castle of all it's called oh what was that you just looted so i have tons of stuff already <laughs> not much gold in the protecting the captain rules legacy box for uh, gods no goddesses know how long no you're right you deserve a reward of some kind um you got something better than all the gold <laughs> in the box <laughs> yes I do. Worth far more than any gold. I pull out a loot. A song. Oh, God. Gil, if they, like, start beating the shit out of Chip, like, what's the plan? I mean, I guess we could together maybe pick up that <laughs> giant chocolate statue and run. I like that, yeah. <laughs> this song has been passed down for generations, and everyone who hears its melody is granted wisdom. All right, let's hear it. I need to set the stage properly. I'd like to move away from the box. His, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so to clarify, his boot, his foot is on the box. Mm -hmm. You know, he just shut it with his foot. I'd like to walk far away <laughs> and say, you need to come over here <laughs> where the acoustics are better. I go, ha, ha. No, the acoustics really aren't right good right here. I feel like, I feel like, ah. yeah, it's like right over there is like the sweet spot. <laughs> it's not going to come across right. You're not going to get the wisdom. World deception. Okay. 18. I only have a plus three. There's no reliable talent here. This is all rolls, baby. I'm not helping with this. No, you're, you're on, on your own. own here, man. But that, that giant golden chocolate statue. Maybe, maybe a different story. That, that we can. Can you guys help me in some way here? No, these people were nice and they cured me of my corruption. Dude, we're pirates. We got to do some pirate shit. We did some pirate shit, man. We fought these guys. We sailed all the way here. They beat the shit out of us, gave us some of the treasure we were supposed to get, and burned my skin off. <laughs> it's not their fault. I mean, it's happening now, guys. You got to... Uh, dude, I don't even know who you are anymore, man. You're a fucking skeleton. You're fucking like, stealing shit. You're a fucking skeleton stealing shit. I'm not stealing. This chest was for us. Mike comes up wherever you are. Yeah, I want to hear it. He comes up, stands next to you. Jarski rolls a natural 19. I can hear you from over here. How about just start playing it? And we'll see if this gives me the wisdom better than, well, let's say probably like 400 gold. Wait, what, 400 gold? That's what I see. Just eyeballing it. That's it? That's all that's, I thought, but they were like gems and stuff. That's a lot of gold. Ah, screw this, oh, whatever, I leave. Wait, 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 what's the song? <laughs> I can throw down the loot. Fucking 400 gold. Wait, so you were lying? <laughs> you guys suck. You were supposed to help me. I look well, at Gillian. How are you, man? Well, I don't know the song. I look at, <laughs> look at Jay. What were you doing? An igneous? Stop smoking that weed, man. You sound weird with it. I don't know what you're talking about. The song. Dude, all right, let's let's get out of here. Thanks for the stuff. Keep the 400 gold. Thank you, guys. Can I have one of the bean bags? One of these Captain Rose mar marketable bean bags? I'm taking a bean bag. All right, we've already got a bean bag. Sell this for 400 fucking gold. You take the bean bag with uh, the bean mushroom bag with uh, Captain Rose's face on. I it? grab one of their one of their printable T-shirts that has Captain Rose's face on it. Um, out of the gift shop on the way out. Yeah, I get like a little, I get like a little Disneyland automated fan yeah. with Captain yeah. Rose's face on. <laughs> he's got his fucking tongue out and he spins around and blows on me. <laughs> and then we go down, and then we go down, and then we leave, and then we leave, and then we leave, and then we move uh, on. Killing Jay on you guys' way out. Uh, Floski does all of the uh, uh, moving, the 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 ice and stuff to create the doorways. They quietly sort of thank you both for letting them do your hair and work on it no i think her oh shit guys by the way i don't know if this is super appropriate of me, of me to ask but it's kind of like the only thing good that's happened on this island in a long time but um if you guys are still in town uh there's a there's a little wedding there'll probably be an after party or something if you if you want to see something fun and get out of the uh get out of the wave a wedding in the Black Sea. I know. Doesn't sound like something you'd want to miss, does it? Well, think about it. 
And you see now that you're kind of like out there and the lake hasn't completely frozen over again, although it is working on it from the edges. So you do have to get back on a little boat to go across back and then back down, uh, which we're not going to play out because you might die. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, as you guys, uh, unless there's anything else you want to say or do, you can see the edge. The boat is sort of like almost like magically uh, turns back around and then starts to go back like it's being carried by a current. And <laughs> you hear carried through the wind, like shouted out. See you later. Thanks for the 5,000 gold. <laughs> you motherfuckers owe me money. No, thank you. Oh, these guys are great, Chip. I'm looking at Gillian just angry. And uh, following Enya's lead, head back down. Uh, do you have a spell slot to summon Lucy? I totally do, yeah, yeah. You definitely don't have to. No, no, Lucy's coming um, back. <laughs> Lee yes! comes all the way. Uh, big brother. Uh, oh, little that, sister, I'm sorry you went down the drain. I'm gonna say that helps you all get down the, the mountain way easier than it was to get up. And uh, following in you get back through the, the uh, forest of mushrooms, the town, the river cross, past the egg village of the hideout, um, and those abandoned uh, port towns before it. And you see, you get to the spider capital, or I'm sorry, the spider lily capital, and there are these. You kind of are able to follow Igneous because he's able to track so well, like different footsteps and stuff. This little path that they carve their way through that is safe all the way from the entrance to the palace. It does start to get quite late at this point um, because of just how long travel has, has taken, which is fine. A little nighttime wedding never killed anybody. You arrive at those giant, massive fucking doors to the palace and just sort of uh, enter in. <laughs> Oh, sorry, that was Lucy. They actually oiled the doors so they don't make a single sound. She she howls sometimes. Most of it looks the same. Like, there's still, like, cobwebs everywhere uh, and, like, the weird fucking abnormal thick black stringy webs from the spiders here. But there are sort of, I guess, some wilted, some not. These, like, you know, white and yellow petals that sort of lead up the steps that kind of help uh, guide you guys towards the chamber where they want to hold this and that where they've cleared out, cleaned out, and uh, done their best to arrange what looks like it's very haphazardly. It's it's not perfect, right? Because you're in this like very decayed building, but there are places to sit. There's like a little altar, I think that's what it's called, um, or or wherever they stand under, and um, you don't see either of them yet, but you do see like a little podium just under that little wreath, uh, that sort of archway where. Gillian can stand and do the ceremony style, and you see the few survivors, uh, most of the ones that I described are all here, or all of the ones I described are here. There's a few that you didn't meet that are around and scattered. It's maybe like 10, 15, or 20 people. And uh, yeah, you guys are free to prepare or wait or sit or whatever you want to do. I, I was going to say, if I can use uh, the decanter of endless water and, and um, shape water to, to pretty it up and sort of make, you know, ice pillars and seats for people. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. You know, like a bigger archway. Anything I can do to kind of surprise them and make it even nicer than it is just accenting what they already have. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, would you allow me to like change what spells I have prepared for this for roleplay reasons and nothing else really? Yeah. I've had ceremony ever since they talked about getting married because I'm I was so scared that this day would come and I would <laughs> forget to have it. Just for this once, for the for, for the occasion. I'm going to look around the castle for a kitchen area and I'm going to prepare a food some food. I will prepare hot dogs <laughs> wrapped oh. in crescent rolls. A little difficult because of just. Like the amount of uh, resources. Whatever I can get to look like pigs in a blanket, that. It's like a professional chef because you're like finding scraps and turning them into something presentable. Can I like be there and cast purify food and drink on whatever he uses? Uh, yeah, you can help out, Jay. I make a YouTube short. I made this primordial ooze gourmet. Uh, I'll just say chip roll survival. With my reliable talent, that's a dirty 20. I'll say that you can make like finger food uh, for this sort of uh, pre-session. Is that, I don't know if that's the right word, but the, you know, before they actually begin the ceremony, this is what you guys are able to make for everybody. Cause that's about what you could probably do here. That makes sense in this, you know, abandoned and de decrepit cast or palace. When people start to like, before the ceremony goes on, is there anybody who looks knowledgeable? Cause I'm looking for something and I want to kind of ask around. Just roll an investigation real okay? quick. This is something I swear to God, 23. There is an X, not, eh, not an X, but someone that looks like they used to be a professor or a teacher here. It's the Spring Eldrin elf that I described. It's Tricel Rolfeira. I'm pretty sure is their name. Tricel. 
Yeah, you see Queen sitting next to both Griffin and the blacksmith. Uh, just chatting, doing a little better than earlier. Okay. Obviously been cheered up a little bit. That's good. Despite the blacksmith, but you know, as a woman of a few words. And then, yeah, so you walk up to the spring Eladrin, um, Trissel, and she's like deep in a book, sitting and waiting for things to begin. Uh, as I walk up, I'll just say, uh, excuse me, uh, I don't I don't mean to bother yes. you, you just look like you no, might. No, no worries. No, um. Know what I'm looking for. I, um, I'm wondering if anywhere in this area you might know of a, this might sound strange, a fruit that would be rare and specific to the region? See, we had a friend who, who likes to get these exotic fruits and, and make juices out of them, and I wanted to bring something back for him. On the cliff above the palace, there used to be an orchard filled with fruit. But since our island has died, a lot of it is gone. You'd be lucky to find something fruity anymore. Even my hair is wielding in this environment. You know, our hair is made of vines and leaves and petals and stuff. Hopefully we'll be able to get you guys out of here, but... That would be a miracle. It's not a powerful enough sorcerer or wizard in, in, in the vicinity, not for a very long time. We've got a way. Really? Maybe we'll save it and let them have their moment for now, but we're working on something. Uh, I mean, like, without even insight, she kind of doesn't even really believe you. <laughs> That's okay. I just say thank you, and I, and I, and I walk on. I, I'm just going to tell you, there's no there's no fruit on this island to find. Like, it is so, it, like, I've described everything as blighted, and they're all, it's all dead. Where the shot? Uh, well, Igneous does come up to you, Chip, and he's like, so, right. I gotta be the best man, and uh, I don't know if I'm suited, literally, to do that. I take off the bandana. <laughs> oh, no. oh, God. Oh. And I get up close to his head, like really close to him, and he can like see like the skin, like flake, like that is flaked away <laughs> and disgusting. Oh, hell no. Dude, this is a wedding. This is a wedding chip. I tie it up around his head. What are you going to do? I mean, you can't go in there looking like that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> he was so shocked. If you go in. And I see you, you will crash the wedding by existing. Oh, so your skin fell off into the into the fucking <laughs> vo- pigs with blankets? What's it called? You know, it looked like this the whole time, right? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Foul creature of the night! <laughs> tackle him out a window. You tackle him through a window that's on the same floor so you guys don't risk your lives. I'd like to, like, put a- wear a cloak. I'd like to wear a cloak. They're gonna look up and it's gonna be like death is watching them. Like, they're gonna see a cloaked figure <laughs> with, like, a fucking half- like, half skull. You just see my hand and you see a mechanical pinky attached like barely to a, an entire skeletal hand. We'll put homie in the back. There's like three rows that are like full of people. And then like 16 rows and all the way in the back is this cloaked figure. This ominous <laughs> just stench coming off of him. <laughs> Jeff's never going to shower again due to this trauma, man. You have the cloak that Gillian uses at all point that you can use. You see, for a moment, uh, Igneous sort of thinks about what he wa- should look like. And he goes, I'm not really good with this whole... um." style part. I mean, I usually keep it pretty simple. Just think of like a tux or something. <laughs> what happened to your voice? What the actual <laughs> fuck? I just wanted to fit the look. Oh, God. I smoked the weed. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, thank God. I thought that thank was God, permanent. I would not have been okay. able to handle this. No, I still have more. He ends up in sort of a, a, a black suit that fits sort of like black with red accents and some white in there fitting their their colors black gold red and white there's like like spider lily patterning and designs and a little napkin that is red not what is it fucking handkerchief that is in the pocket um right well appreciate that um really don't know if this is worth any time and i put my bone hand on his arm bread this weed is lasting a lot longer than normal. This is the forever accent weed. <laughs> Just hang out in the back, little bro. Okay. Big bro. And I, I like hobble my way over to the back. And I, I okay, so I want to stand in the in the doorway. Just like I want to have like a stick that I use to, to walk. And then as people walk in, I slowly lift up my arm and point my skeletal hand towards their seat. <laughs> I'm the usher. <laughs> And I look like that. Uh, yeah, fucking usher into the afterlife, man. So um, a, a few straggling survivors who are taking a look around the palace come in and they walk in, they see this, they fucking ah, scream. Right this way. That's it. <laughs> I'm pointing over at the at the food. Make sure to try the pigs in the blanket. 
There's only a little bit of skin in them. No, but he, not a single pig's in the blanket is eaten this night. Untouched. <laughs> Untouched. I walk up to Jay and I go, Do you want me to walk you down the aisle, sweetie? I'm not getting married. It's your big day. It's not my big day. I'm so proud of you. What? And I hold out my, my decrepit hand at you. Slowly push it away. <laughs> Don't deny this. This is every father's dream. I mean, you're not my father and I'm not getting married. But maybe, maybe someday. So I could get, I get to walk you down the aisle like no, this. No, I'll probably choose Gillian. What the <laughs> fuck? What does Gillian have that I don't? I feel like I'm the, I'm the full package as far as this is concerned. Oh, oh what is this? What is this exactly like? Like I, I feel like I have a very fatherly energy. No, I actually don't think either of you really have a fatherly energy. I mean, like I guess you had Ollie for a while, and maybe you channeled some of it there but well, that was more like a big brother thing yeah okay i don't know i looked the part i'm like father of death kind of looking yeah but i mean like you know by the time i get married hopefully that wouldn't be the case if i get married i don't know well if you I... don't believe in marriage no it's not that it's just like you don't believe in the beautiful union between two becoming one i mean it's just like it's it's hard to meet somebody when you're out at sea like this um hey what the fuck are you guys talking about i don't know it's like kind of getting a little introspective now i'm gonna be alone forever i'm looking over all this stuff it's been a minute since i did this and the last time i did this i was fucking sloshed so um <laughs> I'm, I'm just realizing we need a ring bearer you're already the usher chip is that something you'd like to do jay or should i get lucy um, why don't we get i mean like it should be their friends all right all right let's get knock as the ring bearer that's awesome now that i think about it who would marry me like this i would not marry this that's gonna be your one motivation to fix it. i'm going to be alone <laughs> forever well i can think of one person who? who might want to who might want to see you again who who you are forever bound to by the th by the thread of fate irreversibly. Gillian, do you think your sister's more of a looks kind of gal or more of like a who you are on the inside? What floor do you think we're on? Uh, Let's find out. <laughs> I, I tackle him out the window. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to play our hearts out and we are going to make this the most believable, lovable wedding in the darkest arc of the show. Eventually, um... It seems like Zamia and Star were getting ready separately with um, outfits made uh, by both Queen and the blacksmith together, uh, sort of uh, um, in, in a combination as fast as they could with whatever they had, but as well made as possible. Gillian, you sort of stand at the, uh, at the front under that little archway that is covered in these uh, black and red spider lilies of, uh, and... Uh, Queen is in the room, and once it seems like everybody is here, you also notice in the crowd from where you're standing, Gillian, you do see Green is here. You don't see the Yeti Pirates, uh, and you see all the survivors uh, and people that uh, you met, including like Petlin, the Rabbit, and stuff. And Queen begins to very gently take out their, their oboe, and they sort of enchant it with some magic, and when they play it, it sounds like a, like a piano. Softly, they begin to play some tune. And everyone gets quiet when it starts playing because they can tell like the the brides are soon to walk out who's gonna come out first who knows it doesn't matter <laughs> We're about to see. i'm at the edge of my seat well who you see first and everyone sort of like looks behind them when they're sitting in these chairs uh you see igneous walking by himself um he just sort of walks he looks very like upright the most proper igneous has presented in himself clearly has a lot of respect and a lot of passion for this and he comes down the aisle with a smile, he uh, uh, goes to the left side of Gillian and sort of stands there. Next figure that you guys see come is actually uh, Nock, the Kenku. <laughs> and uh, she's holding like a little pillow, I guess, that they, uh, it, it, it looks, you know, it's kind of like ragged and stuff because of, again, where we are. Uh, it's what they could find and they're holding it. And it, it, there are like two bands that it looks like they've been recently forged uh one of them is so like silver with like a black band the other one is gold with the black band we have a uh, we have gems in our inventory can i just take like a certain amount of money out and say we gave them some gems <laughs> like to put on the rings or is that is that yeah sure we're just giving away all our shit well, dude you're fine we're getting and we're getting nothing dude we're getting the joy and happiness of watching 
holy matrimony, okay? How much How much gold in relation to gems do you want to give each of the um, rings? 250 gold each. Why not? 500 gold total. Fuck it. I have 100 gold in my inventory. 250 gold rings. Wow, okay. So you hand these gems um, to Alice, who actually asked for gems. Um, and they forge... I don't have the exact details or colors, but basically the gemstones on these silver... Uh, metal rings uh, would probably match their um, whatever the equivalent of birthstones is in Riptide. <laughs> it's it's different because the months are different, but something like that. Um, and that's what Nock brings to the front. And then the music that Queen is playing switches. You see two very beautiful women walk out together, and these uh, Zami is wearing this like black, mostly black suit that has like some red accents again, very similar to. A, what Ignis is wearing, although a lot more decorated. Um, it looks really good, especially with what they had. And next to her is Star. They're walking out together. They're both holding these like bouquets. They're holding hands. Uh, and Star is wearing uh, similar to their robes, similar colors, white and gold. Very similar to what they wear, like as a cleric of Daphne Palace. And they walk together. Uh, and everyone in the audience has a, a this is definitely a bright moment for all these people who have gotten closer as survivors um, and just survived in general for them to like take this initiative and do something that is for normal people outside of this very apocalyptic setting that they have had to live through for the past 10 years and they walk uh you can tell star is already uh trying not to cry right because uh yeah zamia stoic but uh gentle and they both make it to the front in front of you gillian and they turn to face each other and king and, and knock just kind of like rests out there like knees you know yeah yeah that's what you hear from knock okay settle down pull out my little uh wrong book <laughs> put the whole one back in pull out my little fish bible we gather here today under the light of luna Deus, to unite two beautiful souls in holy matrimony, <laughs> irreversibly. Lock eye contact with Chip. You can't see my eyes on bones and dust. He's in this like dark cloak <laughs> in the background. In the darkest of places, these two have come together within this palace to show the world true love and light. Do you, Zamia, take star to have and to hold, to weather the darkest storms and strongest tides together. Of course I do. And you, Star, do you take Zamia for all of that stuff too? Gillian, come on. <laughs> it's how it's written. <laughs> okay, never mind. I do. And do you two both have uh, your vows and mating dances prepared? Uh, you get a nod from Star. I sort of gesture to go ahead. You may now recite your vows. It looks like Sar was going to speak and 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 begin, but uh, she gets overwhelmed in the moment just with like emotion. Zami so, mean, notices this, uh, grabs both of her hands very very quickly, um, reads the situation instantly, and then begins to speak. Star, it feels selfish of me to want to be the only one you shine on, but you have always been and are everyone's light and I would never want to change you I will however promise to you an unrelenting devotion to be honest even if some truths cause pain to care for you above all others but still show all others the compassion you have taught me to never again lose my courage for none of my fears would be worse than disappointing you or losing you to pledge this eternal oath and to love you and to learn to learn to love every new you as we grow together forever she broke a little bit at the end there and these like streaks wet uh with star's face it's just wet now takes her a minute to get herself together to where she can speak through 
that choked up feeling in her throat. Samia. <laughs> you are the anchor that keeps my very soul from drifting too far away. When I get lost so often, you are the strongest woman I have ever known. And we are all alive because of how long you stayed strong when we could not. More than that, you give me the purest and truest love. I can only hope to return. I promise. To try my hardest. To be my best self. To give you my patience when you are overwhelmed or ever upset. To learn and bloom with you and to support you. To give you a very special place in my life no one could ever fill. To heal all your wounds, no matter how many times, how many hits you shrug off. To protect you in the quietest corners of our room where you won't let others see. To cherish your radiance and remind you of your beauty every day. Forever and always. Um, two of them finished their vows. Just there's some fucking someone is like snot ugly crying in the in the in the audience <laughs> right now. It's Jay. <laughs> it's Jay. Uh, and now may the ring bear bring forward the rings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Nog uh, flutters up, holds them up in between the two of them, and they gingerly grab each other's opposite rings and then place them on their fingers together. I hold uh, my, my hands over both of the rings and they both begin to glow as does this um, podium there on and as, as they do as well. And I say, may you both be each other's destinies for now and always. And I cast uh, the wedding ceremony Legally required to tell you as well for the next seven days, your AC is increased by two. Uh, it does wear off after that, and it will not take <laughs> effect again unless you are legally uh, uh, widowed, in which case it can be cast again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I step back from them after doing that. So here is where usually in undersea culture, I would say you may now release your spawn, <laughs> but that doesn't really... <laughs> Seems super appropriate. Um, so I, we're switching it last minute. You may now kiss the bride. You may now mack it. The two, yeah, <laughs> they fucking mack it. The two rings glow, and you see that so do both of their eyes. This sort of divinity from both a cleric and a paladin who has taken a new oath. And uh, when they uh, share their embrace, a sort of a uh, glowing ring uh, emits from the two of them above their heads, and it does fill this chamber with uh, light. And everyone can see everything. It burns, Chip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I turned to dust in the back. From dust. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Just can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I, I open it up. I open up the, the hood. I, <laughs> and I just like, turn gray and start to crumble, and you see the, the robe hit the floor. This moment uh, lingers on everyone in the room for uh, a while and to sort of break this silent spotlight, which the two of them don't seem to handle very well. Star whips mm -hmm. around towards everybody and says, um, uh, screams out, let's celebrate. And then she magically holding Zamia's hand using some of their combined power uh, brings forth this a uh, magnificent feast, like a fucking magical table of aberrations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it destroys <laughs> Chip's food. <laughs> and, and, and Queen's like, yeah, let's party. And then you hear, ba, 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 party rock. And uh, everybody starts dancing. <laughs> that's my wedding experience. Like, that's like the only thing I've ever experienced is party rock anthem. First thing. I'm picking up the pigs in the blanket off the floor, just retreating into the corner and eating them. <laughs> Was there something Jay wanted to do post uh, ceremony? Well, there will be like like a way to see through the ceiling because I think that would be cool if there was if the just like open open ceiling kind of concept here. You can ex 
explode it. We flash back, and I, I did some pre-wedding demolition. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Debris falls down. Eight guests are crushed underneath. Wait, wait, maybe you maybe. rigged it. No, with no, 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 no! You're misunderstanding. You're misunderstanding. No, newlyweds, get down. Okay, well, I mean, technically, what I had involved explosives, but it's not like that. <laughs> It's not like it's only I was gonna blow them up. <laughs> There's a skylight. Is that all? You, that's all you get. There's a skylight. Well, no, it's because it's and they and I had them timed perfectly because I activate them myself with my magical powers and they fly into the air and explode into beautiful fireworks and across the sky using the spell Skyright it says Zomia and Star bright enough for the entire goddamn Black Sea to see. <laughs> a moment of light within this dark. Twisted hell hole! And that's... <laughs> you do that, it attracts every hollowed within like a 100 mile radius, and then, you know, it gets swarmed. You know what? Whatever. We can handle a few m hollowed. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, once again, this hero's feast, that's the spell, gets uh, uh, explodes out, and uh, everyone here is able to sort of enjoy real food and drink uh, for the first time for a lot of these people in a, in a while. I guess like a little ways into the celebration, since we never really brought it up earlier, I would probably stand up somewhere and kind of clink my glass and be like, um, hello everybody, just like to give a quick toast to the lovely brides. Oh no, she absolutely wasted. <laughs> How many I, of those have you had? I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you guys <laughs> are awesome. You know that? I mean, Star, you hadn't come in with the explody balls. I would be oh, Jesus. Uh, like chip over there <laughs> in a corner eating pigs in a blanket. <laughs> I'm hissing and I, I lean down and I start shoving them into my face. Chip, you got your bandana back. You got your bandana back. You got your bandana back. You got your bandana oh, then back. I, then I get it back. I lean down. I put it back on. I whip back around. My hair flows. I'm not actually wasted. I'm just fucking around, obviously. But um, I would like to at least take this chance to, to say that... um. How do I want to word this? It's like really awkward that we didn't tell you guys earlier that we had this this miraculous means of escaping the dark sea on our ship this entire time, and and we knew that, and we just never like said a word. It just kind of slipped our mind. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Anyways, we're gonna get you guys out of the black sea at any. Cost. No cost. At, no cost. At any I didn't no, not at a cost. I'm not charging. <laughs> You're a terrible person. By any means. No one has actually said the specifics yet. So Star uh uh just sort of shouts out. I I get this is a, like a, a celebration, but um it's not all that miraculous. We can't do that much magic. Oh yeah, we have like a teleporter. Uh, it's on our it's on our boat. Yeah, it's on our boat. Um and it <laughs> connects to an island uh known as Canela. Uh, near the the city of Zero, um, and we have a wonderful, wonderful lady over there named Enza, who's just a brilliant, brilliant woman. knows all about technology and making teleporters work, and uh, they do work. Super normal island. Very normal island. Super normal yeah. place. Um, in the south, it's the South Sea, I think it is. At the south, I should know this. Vibes a little weird now. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Sorry, I'm actually a little bit drunk. <laughs> I'll fucking do it. Now uh, you finish. There's like silent for a good thirty seconds. You hear silverware drop. Uh, and then you hear very quietly, Vouch. Thank you, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> Smash cut. Uh, everybody is getting wheeled onto the fucking ship. It's just like, it's like 30 seconds of awkward silence, cutlery falling, and then smash cut. Yeah. Somebody goes, what? <laughs> uh, and then uh, it just fucking it cuts. What, what, what is, is there anything else you guys wanted to do here before you start sending people home with your teleporter? No, I just wanted to say congratulations to them and ask if anyone else wanted to spontaneously um, get married or come of age. I know Chip and, um, and Igneous were talking about it earlier. Well, yeah. Igneous didn't want it. Oh, right. That's right. Yeah. Still hasn't changed. Nobody want me. Yeah, no, I just, I just, I just congratulate them. So for the night, um, if there's nothing else you guys wanted to do, everybody uh, long rests inside the palace as it's mostly safe now. Everyone's all good except Chip. Chip, make your intelligence saving throw as you sort of don't sleep, but rest and just mull over in your mind, trying to think of all of Chip's past memories as far back as you can and just, uh, you know, not lose yourself. Natural 20. Whoa, nice. So 31. With the natural 20, obviously you succeed. You don't feel yourself losing uh, that key part of what makes ship ship. Um, and even because you roll natural 20, it doesn't feel like it's going to get harder. 
to remember. Like, you got it. Nice. If, if you want to explain why, you can. Otherwise, Maybe just looking out. down at the ring and seeing the waves okay. slosh around in there. That's beautiful. Uh, with that, the next day, you guys start f uh, heading back with all of the survivors to your ship. You have to contact Dre to figure out where it is. They steer it, basically like paddle it together. Uh, <laughs> Finn, Earl, Dre's feet paddle this giant ship. Uh, this caravel towards the, uh, the the middle dock where you guys meet up and you start funneling people into the teleporter. Uh, do you guys want to say anything like goodbye, any last words? Uh, you immediately get a call from Enza as soon as like the first batch of 10 people go through. Um, I'm going to say it has to be in batches. And just for this once, I'll allow more people than normal. So as soon as they come through, and so you get your call and she's like, what the fuck? You're like, there's <laughs> people just coming into our house. <laughs> I can't fit this many people in my okay, fucking well, house. Let's build another one. Girl, it just hangs up. Like, that's really it. <laughs> Look to, to Zamia and give her a smile. I'd stare her in the eyes and I'd say, traitor, and throw her off the ship. <laughs> Uh, no, that doesn't happen. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking about like memories of Zomia. <laughs> it was a hallway. It was just a hallway. It was only hallway. <laughs> oh, dude, fuck the fucking hallway. You're scaring me, man. First explosive. <laughs> dude, I, I'm sorry, I'm just particularly on him. Yeah, something, something's <laughs> up with Jay tonight. I just wanted to actually like quickly talk to Zomia and say, hey, um, I know it was probably like a little scary uh, a few times, especially towards the end, but I'm glad you, you trusted us enough to save everybody and then kill those pirates yada yada i'm not really good at being sentimental right now it's just like a whole thing it's <laughs> she puts her hand on your shoulder uh, it's a very firm <laughs> pat she says be careful especially with who knows about this teleportation machine on your ship it is more valuable in this ocean than any amount of gold yeah that's a good point shit that would have worked <laughs> <laughs> it was good knowing you even though a lot of it was, um, I mean, we'll see each other again. You're just going to Canela unless you move out of Canela. We have a chance at, at life now. We'll see where it goes. Thanks. I just give her a nod. All right, I'd like to go find Green. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was in the audience. I go, um, I go up to him. I turn him around. I grab him on the shoulders. You will find a small mountain dwarf. He will be angry. He will be drunk. <laughs> you will befriend him. Go. <laughs> And I walk away. <laughs> <laughs> it is your fate. And then I just step into the shadows and disappear forever. Yeah, I'm going to say Green actually does get into the teleporter and goes. But what would you like to do, Gillian? I just wanted to say something uh, real quick to Zamia. See? You didn't have anything to be worried about. Looks like you found yourself a new oath, Paladin. She uh, hits you with the Predator handshake. The classic superhero. Oh, shit! Shake. Uh, and she looks into your eyes for a moment and she says, How have you done it? Been so devoted to your oath. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think when things seem worse, when things seem dark, I look around and never far from me is someone to remind me who I'm fighting for. I look at Chip and Jay and so your power comes from people you care for too, then? Well, actually, I don't take. Uh, it looks like the teleporter's turning on. Oh, no, 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 she says good luck before Al, uh, before Gillian becomes an oath breaker. Yeesh, am I right? <laughs> before everybody gets sent away, I look at Chip. I look towards Ignis. I mean, are you gonna ask him like join a crew or anything? Igneous is now meeting Earl, uh, Dre, and Finn. It's like this weird. I mean, they're sizing him up. They're sort of looking at him. They're teasing him. He's obviously staying because okay. he promised. Like yeah. he 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 said like you know what you get them out of here. And now uh, at first he didn't even believe it, but since they're all going, he, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's here. He's here. Fuck yeah, Igneous, my dog. With that, the survivors of this island are teleported to your keep in Canela, and. On the albatross again for since it's been a, a it feels like it's been a while it's only been a few days you start to sail down that little river that splits the two sections of the islands in half and kind of come out came from the north so you're coming out from the south side we will figure out where you're Who going knows? on the next session so that's yeah. we're gonna end this one scouts out scouts <laughs> out scouts out scouts out thank you everybody for watching bye. Ah, uh, you know what time it is. It's the end of the episode. We got to give a huge shout out 
to those $50 patrons, those high roller patrons over at patreon.com slash just roll with it. Let's get a huge shout out to Stoom Yums, That One Furry, I'm Just a Burb, Cranky Martin, Kirby, Goose, Lightning Deathbringer, That Rare John, Amino Methy Pyramidinal Hydroxy Ethyl Methy Thiazolium, Jesus Bree But Scary, It's Albert, Tintanu, William B. Wumbo, Insomnia Draws, Zenith Scythe, Kelly the Raccoon, Agar Steeljaw, Lim Muncher, Mr. Anderson 1078, Me Phobia Man, Aaron Moment, Water Lenny, Alistair Susie, Roderick Motif, Final Fan, Falugash, Certified Cringe Fail Loser Boy, To Be Determined The D&D Group, Haribo, That One Person, Aldrich, EMT3, Emperor Pangu 69, Erica Moon, Kojo Wo, It's a Fena, Mr. C, Gublek Whisperer, Nova Sink, The Game Hunter, Teeny Ghosts, Willistrator, It's C Fresh, Me Forever Mate, Stoost Dude, Cereza Cool, Charlie Darling Songbird, Eclipse 1680, The Oval Lord, Aqua the Kaizaku, Bazozo, Quinn Gibson, Eco Fu, Kadus Betus, Epicris, Kalen, Leftover Rice, You Will Rue the Day, Hmm Burger, Titan Storm, Jonathan Bleak, Luke Ranbu, Thomas Pierce, Lemon Leviathan, Beebness, Dapper, Ruth the Banana Duck, Unstable Chaotic Cracker, Me as Hell, Hollow Headed, Bree Lee, Daxi Boy, Vapor, O Kerberos, Colin the Bard, Fluful Boo, I'm Butt Flusting, Beans, Pupper in a Spacesuit, Curb Win, Wolfie, J Aids, 2604, Pippin the Paladin, Pain, Lambert the Snazziest, Sweet Cacti, Baka 7, Cows the Folded Pizza Zone, The Awesome Man, F Bomb 02, Amber Curry, Robert Gangwer, Chilean Vibe Strider, That's Cool as Fuck, Man Made, Oomp, Man, Imp, I keep thinking it's an L, Mag U, Jordan Darlin, I Am In Your Walls, Abby, Kate, and Elliot, Sam and Ducky, Sarah Lester, Mr. Nacho, Wild James, Sammy Bo the th Second, Kev Senpai, Bisley's Burger, Finrua, Mitchell Iverson, Mithril Gear, Boss Goat, Captain Lafayette and Crew, Narwhal Shellfish, Derpy Tricks, Geekly Legend, Krovins, Zero Codex, Deathclaw, Sandy007, William Smith, Apple, Soul of a Pep, Bid Big Man Christian, Blue Blend Blop, Big Blue Bear Boy, Elise the Washed Up Bard, Zerberus, Elvish Cyborg, Obligatory References, Cryosan is Sin, Spinyaks, Buttery Toast, Raytheon, Jacob Martinez, Kirby Wafro, Silv Soul, Bionicle DD, Jason the Fricker, Anko, Unoya Loon, Gillian's Biggest Fan, The Godly King, Cornier Comet, Sorcerer Punk, Charm of the Bard, Riker Kirotu, Kitsune, Nonslottle, Asterian Nix, George Benji, Funny Hats Incorporated, JRWI Enjoyer, Divinator, and Jay Newell. Listen, the list is getting long, but it can always get longer. If you want your name shouted at the end of a Just Roll With It episode, make sure to go over to patreon.com slash just roll with it and get in on that high roller tier. Thank you guys so much for making it all the way through all those names. Appreciate every single one of you. And good night or day.